Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tremendous Tech Time. Today we're talking about the DJI Phantom 3 quadcopter again, and we want to find out how to smoothen the yaw of our copter, so how to let it rotate around its own axis more smoothly, and how to um, apply some cool changes to the remote controller to be to end up as a better cinematographer. The German finger again. <laughs> So guys, before we get into the super complicated gain and expo settings, actually there's nothing you gotta be afraid of, but before we get into that stuff, let's just talk of how to extend the length of the left stick of a remote control. Actually, the left stick controls the yaw movement and we want to extend the length of it. But why is a longer stick actually better than a short one? And by the way, this was not meant ambiguous at all. So um, the longer the stick, the more input you need to create movement. If you move a short stick, only a little, you will immediately create some movement. But if you extend the stick, you will need much more movement for the stick to create the same amount of movement. And to extend the stick, simply hold onto its peak and turn it counterclockwise. Then take the second, the leftover part of the stick and uh, screw it counterclockwise as well until the two touch again and then tighten both parts and kiching very very easy solution now the stick is extended and you will be able to um, be more precise while controlling the yaw movement of your copter and right now let's just get into the settings within the DJI Go app. The copter is up and running and the DJI Go app is connected now let's just tap at this quadcopter looking uh, symbol at the upper left hand side of the monitor and next we tap at gain and expo tuning and we scroll down and now tap at gain. Now we find the basic gains and should we adjust the yaw in here? Actually no, 100 works out very very well. If you are going to change the yaw and you expect the copter to uh, for example um, move slower, more sluggish, this is actually not going to happen. Why is that so? The basic gain and all those gains in here, the pitch, the roll, the yaw and the vertical, they only refer to external influences. For example, if um, the, if there is any movement caused by, for example, wind speeds or by pressure and stuff like that, that's when you should be changing those gains. So if the copter moves too hard, if it reacts too hard to, uh, I don't know, wind changes or stuff like that, you should change the, the values in here. But 100 works out fine in most situations actually. And as I just said before, if you change the values in here, this won't affect um, your movements that you yourself do with a remote controller, with the sticks. So let's just keep this at 100. And by the way, if you want to watch an extended tutorial of mine where I talk about the very, very interesting gain settings, check out the description of this video. You will find a link in there or at the end of this tutorial, I will link this gain episodes as well. So let's just keep this on 100 right now and let's just go back and scroll up again until we reach the expo tuning menu again. Now we find the throttle and the rudder and the forward backward um, graphs. Throttle, rudder, forward backward. And those look very, very interesting. So what do we see in here? First off, we see the Y axis, we see an X axis, and um, yeah, and we see this blue graph, sometimes a little curvier, sometimes a straight one, sometimes again a little curvier, and in the middle we are having um, a, a small needle. So for example, if I move the left stick to the right and left, you should now take a look at the rudder, and this is actually going to be the interesting um, graph to us, the rudder. Let's just move the left stick. You can see the yellow needle moving up and down. And actually we see that the line, the blue line is just a line. It's not a wavy, uh, I don't know, exponential curve. It's only a straight line. So, and this means that if I only push the, uh, the stick of the remote control a little bit, you can see the needle moving up and down the Y axis immediately. And this actually means that if you only move the stick a very tiny little bit, the copter is immediately going to react and it's going to move to either the left or the right, so it's going to rotate. 
Now how to slow that movement down. That is pretty simple. We can change the value. Now that is set on 0.5 and we can make this a curve again. So we can set this to not 0.7, but we can set this to 0.3. 0.3 is actually the slowest value possible and now we can see that the blue line has changed and now looks like a curvy thing like a blue curvy I don't know wavy thing and um, if we now take the left stick and move it to the right or left we can see that the yellow needle doesn't really move up and down the y axis but moves along the x axis at first and this actually means that while it only moves around the x axis it is not really going to rotate the copper is not really going to rotate and this is pretty cool for example if you are having a little shaky left thumb or um i don't know if you want to start a rotation this means that the copter is either going to react only a tiny 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 little bit or not at all and uh, for example if this was a straight line again we remember that every every single millimeter that we moved the the stick um the, the needle went up and down the y-axis and really caused rotation. And now this is very much slowed down. We can see it only moves up and down the y-axis if we really move the stick. So if I really move it to the right or left, we can see it moving up and down. And if I only move it a little bit, we see that nothing really happens. It mostly stays on the x-axis and this is pretty cool. Now. What is the best value? 0.3 is actually the slowest value available, while 0.7 is the fastest speed available. And uh, what should we actually take? I have taken that to the test. I have tested the slowest value, 0.3. I have tested 0.7, the fastest. I have tested 0.4, which is the standard um, value that is set to uh, the, the, the phantoms. And I have tested and found my very, very most liked, my favorite value and I will tell you what that value is later. So what is the best rudder value for cinematography reasons for aerial cinematography? Let's just throw an in-depth look at some footage at some test footage that I shot with different values applied to it and uh, stay tuned and enjoy it. So at 0.4, which is the standard set um, value, we can see that the movement is not too fast, not too slow. It's it's kind of nice, even though I think it's a little harsh. If we now take 0.3, the slowest value available, we can see this is very, very, very slow, which could be good. But actually, this could be kind of boring um, because this is almost a little too slow. If we now choose 0.7, you can see that the movement is really fast and absolutely not usable for video at all. So let's just put this down to my favorite value, which is 0.37. And 0.37 is pretty slow, but it's not too slow. And um, I think you are very much good to go with that. So if you're having, I don't know, a little shaky thumb on the left stick, uh, you won't see immediate reaction caused by, I don't know, the, the, the very tiny movement that you cause with your shaky thumb. And um, But actually, if you start moving, uh, the copter is going to move slowly, but not too slow. And I think 0.37 is the best value to go with. And now let's just compare all four values again for a second. And just, let's just take a look at them again and just enjoy the differences. Please give me money. I'm such a poor boy. Please click at the donate button. Tomstechtime.com slash donate if you want to return the help. I'm a German. No. No, I, 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 can't, I can't get your attraction that way, right? I'm, yeah, but it's Swiss, Swiss people are even more rich than German people. Leave a donation. Just don't think about it. Rich man in the sky.